Hello, my name is Peter Deli, and today I will talk about practical considerations for channel assignment in wireless mesh networks. The talk is outlined as follows. I will moderate the topic, give some description of the experimental setup we used, and then ask and answer the following questions. Are the output powers uniform over all channels? Without external interference, are all channels equal? What role does modulation and coding play? Do channel distance and ACI effects correlate with each other? And what happens if we put it all together? I will conclude the talk with a few recommendations for designing channel assignment algorithms. Over the last years, wireless LAN cards got incredibly cheap. That made it possible to create multi-radio systems. In particular for wireless mesh networks, multi-radio systems can greatly improve performance as multiple transmissions can go on in parallel. However, when using multi-radio systems, there is inherently the problem of channel assignment, which channels to use on which radios and on which links. A lot of research has been done on channel assignment, mainly using three approaches. The first approach is to use analytical models, for example, based on graph structures. The second approach is to use network simulations, for example, with NS2. And the third widely found approach is to use testbed experiments. When using the first two approaches, analytical models and network simulators, Typically, very simple uh, physical layer models are employed. Those physical layer models are often based on faulty assumptions, such as the orthogonality of channels. What we try to do in our paper is to study the joint effects of the physical layer rate, the channel heterogeneity, and the time varying nature of the wireless channel and their relation to channel assignment. We would like to give some guidance for research in channel assignment algorithms. To do so, we conducted a series, a series of experiments using the following setups. We used the Cumbria platform GateWorks 2358-4, those are uh, embedded network processors, as our basic platform and run Linux 2622 and MadWifer 0.95 uh, uh, on the platform. Each of the nodes is equipped with several Aceros based wireless cards which have omnidirectional antennas with 3.6 dBi gain. The whole system is deployed at the ceiling of House 21 at Cal State University, which is depicted in the picture on the right. The measurements were conducted in the 5 GHz band of IEEE 822.11a. By that we avoid external interference from the campus wireless LAN which runs on the 2.4 GHz band. The first question we ask is, are the output powers uniform over all channels? To answer that question, we conducted the following measurement. We connected a mesh node using a coaxial cable to an HP 8, uh, 8566 spectrum analyzer. On the mesh node, we generated multicast traffic in OFDMP PSK mode and measured uh, the output power on the spectrum analyzer using the max hold node. On the mesh node, we fixed the transmission power for all experiments. In the picture here, you can see the result. The picture I read as follows. We, we depict the output powers for channel 36 to channel 64 and use two cards of the same type, but two different cards to show that there is also a difference between cards. The first notable feature we can see in the pictures is that when using the same card, there can be a difference of up to 2 dB in output power on different channels, for example, on channel 40 and channel 64. 
Also when we use different cards, the output power on the same channel can be different. For example, here on channel 40, we have one dB difference on the same channel on channel 40. So the key observations we made from those experiments are that the output powers are not equal on all channels and the difference between cards of the same and different type is existent. The implications from that is that power control is very difficult in, practic in a practical setting since we do not know how high the output power really is and that on different channels we might see different reception strengths. We investigated that uh, implication a bit further in the next experiment. In the next experiment we asked, without external interference are all channels equal? To, do, to answer that question, we used a very simple setup which is depicted in the picture here. We have a node A and a node B and node A uh, multicasts traffic which is received by node B. One measurement session goes over 24 hours and node B records the received signal strengths of all packets which are received. During that time no other networks are active. We conduct the experiment in, in two way or two times, once using link 1A and one using link 1B. 1A and 1B just differs by a bit when we move node A by a few centimeters. In this picture you see the received signal strengths for channel 36 up to channel 64 over a duration of 24 hours. As you can see, there's up to 8 dB difference in received signal strengths between the channels. In this example, channel 48 has a much higher received signal strength compared to channel 64. Also, it's notable that during the day hours, we have a very high variability. Please note here that channel 52, that is the light blue one, is about, um, is not very good, but not very bad. It's about in the middle. In the next step, we moved node A a bit, turning link 1A into 1B. In this scenario, now the channel 52, which used to be fairly good, but not just in the middle before, now is relatively bad. That shows us that doing a small change might have a big implication. So the key observation from those experiments is that the reception strengths on various channels differs largely, that is due to frequency selective fading, that the relative ranking of the channels changing over time changes over times, and that environmental factors are very important which you could see um, in this time of high variability during the day hours. The implications we have here is that even in absence of interference, select of external interference, selecting the right channel is crucial, but it's difficult. Also, small changes such as moving one of the transmitters by a few centimeters can have a large impact. So the question here is really when doing channel assignment do we have to do a frequent reassignment as the environment changes frequently and that can have large implications.